other wildness was those funny phone calls that you did. Yes, I, again, something that turned out great, but which I stumbled over. I, I never created it thinking, hey, here's a new department we can repeat. I had done that, as a matter of fact. Now we go back to the story before The Tonight Show. When I was working in the early 50s for CBS in New York, 52, 53-ish, and uh, we had a telephone uh, backstage with a long cord, so they once would, uh, in a while would bring it on stage if something came up. So I was looking through the uh, New York papers one day, I think it was the New York News, and I saw a big two-page spread with a very simple message. I, we'll call them Krellman Brothers. I don't remember the name of the store. It's a clothing store, men's clothing. And it said, Krellman Brothers' third floor is now open to the public. So to this day, I figure, why is that such a big deal? And so I said as much on the air and the audience laughed. And then, uh, and this was not planned, I said, hey, can somebody bring me a phone? And they yelled, yeah, we'll have it out in a minute. So I said, why don't we call up Krellman Brothers and ask, why, what's the big deal about that we now get on their third floor? Why couldn't we get in yesterday? What's, you know, questions of that sort, philosophical questions, not jokes. So the audience said, yeah, give them a call. So I called them and I said, hello, is this Krellman Brothers? Yes, it is. Very brusque. And I said, I just saw your ad in the Daily News and it says we can get into your third floor now. Is that right? He said, yep. And I said, why couldn't we get in there before? And he said, oh, wise guy. And he hung up on me. <laughs> now, millions of people were watching him, but he didn't know this. They were watching me talk to him. So I had to call him back four times. He kept hanging up on me. He'd listen for one question and then go, damn it, and hang up. Well, hysterically funny. I mean, the audience was laughing. So I finally, I finally got him to hang on the phone at the last attempt, and that, because I later learned friends of his kept phoning him and saying, Dummy, will you stop hanging up on Steve Allen? He's trying to give you a million dollars worth of publicity. Talk to the man. Answer his question. So that played so well, I realized we had accidentally discovered something. So thereafter, uh, I did the funny phone calls on that show and then later on The Tonight Show. But it paid off... <clears throat> The best of all on the Westinghouse show, I, I never know why, who knows about timing. There was this famous market across the street, as I've said, the Hollywood Ranch Market. And like many markets in our country, they had a bulletin board on the side wall in which people would post little personal notices, wanted to share the expenses, driving to Denver Thursday night or whatever, wanted room to rent, want piano to rent, want girl to help with the light cooking and whatever. And we would just borrow these cards for the evening, take them to me on stage, and I would call the people who placed the ads. So that's how that started. And then somebody was, well, the shows were taped, so we had the audio tape of all these. And then later, we realized that we had raw material for a great comedy album. In fact, uh, good news for all fans of Jerry Lewis, and who isn't a fan of his, he's so funny. The funniest single thing Jerry Lewis ever did, and he's done hundreds of funny things, was make one of those calls with me on the show. Uh, it was totally ad lib. There's somebody in the audience, so I said, I used to say, who will we call tonight? We planned nothing. So somebody else called my uncle in Chicago. I saw the, the yell, guy yells up the phone number. We call the guy. Turns out to be a caterer in Chicago. And uh, I don't remember what I said. I talked to him for a minute or two, got a few laughs, and I said, we have a Mr. Uh, Zellman here, who would like to place an order, uh, is that okay with you? And he said, yeah, sure, put him on. Now, it's Jerry Lewis, but the man never recognizes that it's Jerry. Uh, again, you'd have to hear the tape to realize what's so funny about it. It's not a funny story. But Jerry was absolutely brilliant. Funny, funny, funny.